Hello again, coming up next in 7 News. 28 recommendations handed down in the independent flood inquiry. What it means for the residents trying to rebuild their lives. The protest against Forestry Corp over the recent removal of trees. 100,000 tradies are needed to fill gaps in the construction industry. Member for Mile Lake, Stephen Bromhead, to retire at the next election. We remember the life of much-loved community member, Gillian Helvscott. And in the national news, Keir Scott Morrison's justification for secretly taking on extra power while PM and the Hollywood stars behind a bold plan to bring back the Tassie Tiger. This is 7 News, the voice of the coast. Tonight, 28 recommendations in the flood inquiry, including relocation of high-risk areas. An inspection confirms trees were lawfully harvested near Coffs Harbour despite and protests. And later on News Hour, Scott Morrison defends his secret portfolio controversy, a fiery press conference, and Queensland demands three NRL grand finals in a bold new bid. 7 News begins now. Good evening. The Independent Flood Inquiry has recommended 28 changes for the state government following the disastrous floods earlier in the year. We cross live now to Sam Payne, who has analysed the report today. And Sam, there's extensive detail in the 600-page report. Maddie, the recommendations from the report includes a raft of changes. Among them is that land swaps and buybacks should be an option, something locals have been calling out for. The flood inquiry is out and it contains crucial detail according to affected residents. And Sam, what insights have you got today from the report's authors? Maddie, both authors were in Lismore for today's release. In a special interview, I spoke with one of them, former New South Wales Police Commissioner Mick Fuller. He said this was one of the worst flood disasters he's seen in some time and I asked him how he envisaged a permanent disaster centre working. Look... In New South Wales, there are so many important roles that are part-time. Local government, police, right through to the state emergency operations control role in working out where we should build in the future. Mick Fuller told me that while the report is 600 pages long, there are plenty of summaries that people can access that are easier to digest. He said at a lot of the community events, they've took that feedback on and they've implemented it into the report. And now it's up to the state government to make changes with these findings. Thanks for the update, Sam. Sam Payne, live tonight from Lismore. Protesters gathered outside New South Wales forestry offices demanding an end to logging activities in Ellis State Forest. But Forestry Corp says no breaches have occurred. Logging opponents and koala supporters holding banners this morning outside New South Wales forestry offices protesting the harvest operation in Ellis State Forest. And Claire Simmons joins us live now from Coffs Harbour. And Claire, the EPA measured the four harvested trees and no rules were broken. Maddie, giant trees are defined under the Coastal Integrated Forestry Operations Approval and the tree diameters did not breach any protocols. In a statement, the EPA said that none of the four harvested trees exceeded 140 centimetres diameter at 30 centimetres above ground. And while six habitat trees had suffered superficial damage, it was not enough to affect those trees' longevity or suitability. Officers also say they found a seventh tree had blown over in winds, as evidenced by the intact root bulb and the lack of damage from any harvesting machine. Thanks for the update, Claire. Claire Simmons reporting live for us tonight from Coffs Harbour. Crowds are expected at tomorrow's Port Macquarie Council meeting following outrage over a proposed upgrade to the iconic break wall. The break wall is a major tourism attraction and concerns have been raised that extensive upgrades could do permanent damage to the iconic surf break. All we've received is artistic impressions of kind of what's wrong with the break wall. There's been no imagery or anything we've requested at all but we can't get it. Um, so basically Council Roberts is asking for more information. The motion is expected to be raised in tomorrow's 10am meeting, which is open to the public. 
A teenager has been charged after an aggravated robbery in Barraville. In early August, an unknown man kicked a 72-year-old to the ground and demanded cash. While on Monday, an unknown man produced a knife in a separate altercation on the same street. After inquiries, police arrested a 16-year-old boy, charging him with aggravated robbery and custody of a knife in a public space. A Port Macquarie man has been recognised as part of the Australian Bravery Awards after saving the life of his neighbour. Angela Jay was a victim of a domestic violence attack that shocked the nation. She would have died if Steve Wildern didn't intervene. It's one of the country's most horrific domestic violence attacks. Dr Angela Jay was stabbed 11 times and Samantha Crow, 7 News. And if you or anyone you know needs support, you can contact 1800 Respect. That's 1800 737 732. Member for Mile Lake Stephen Bromhead will resign from Parliament at the next election. Bromhead said in a statement he'll take more time to focus on his family. The Nationals MP has served from a, um, as member for Mile Lakes for 12 years across three terms. He says it is the right time to step down after a difficult few months with his health. You might have seen a rare visitor on our beaches. This leopard seal came ashore on Woolgooga's back beach to the surprise of locals. The seal is from Antarctica and estimated to be around two years old. Its condition uh, is actually quite good. There are some small bite marks in the animal that have been uh, caused by what we call cookie cutter sharks. A 40 metre exclusion zone has been set up around the marine mammal. The Bureau of Meteorology is predicting above average rainfall in September and October. The Bureau has moved their La Nina watch to a La Nina alert, meaning the chance of a La Nina event has increased. Climate models and indicators have shifted towards meeting this alert criteria. And in the past, once this alert criteria has been met, La Nina has formed around 70% of the time. The Bureau is advising very high chance of wet conditions that could persist into summer. So Kirsty, as we just heard, we are expecting to see more wet weather in the months to come. Today we did see sunshine though. We did, Maddie, but it was after some of those showers overnight. Good evening, everyone. We saw about somewhere between 5 and 10 millimetres across parts of the region. 4 millimetres fell in Nambucca Heads with 9 millimetres recorded in Yamba. This morning, some slight drizzly weather along the coastal fringe. Otherwise, though, as Maddie said, skies were mostly sunny. Temperatures along the coast reaching the high teens in the north and the low 20s, but that chilly South to southwesterly wind made it feel cooler at times. Ballina felt no warmer than 15 degrees, and Lismore was about the same. A cool start tomorrow. More sunshine on the way, though. Those details a little later, Maddie. Thanks, Casey. We'll see you in a few minutes. Still to come in Seven News, Bellingen farewells a local icon and meet the paramedic recognised for a dramatic rescue. And later on this news hour, Scott Morrison refuses to stand down in the explosive fallout from his secret power grab. Tragedy in LA as the Aussie man is gunned down on the street there. Decision day for the NRL, so where to for the grand final? And the incredible plan to bring back the Tassie Tiger. A paramedic from Taree has been recognised after saving someone's life while putting hers in danger. Trudy Prince drove through a bushfire to save a patient and the heroic act has touched the community. Trudy Prince is a local hero and the Tari paramedic has been recognised. In 2020, she drove through an active bushfire in the Manning Valley. Bianca Werrett, 7 News. Bellingen has lost a leading light of the vibrant arts community with the death of Gillian Helfgott. She was a well-known figure in the community and wife of international pianist David. The Bellingen community is mourning one of their own. Iconic member Gillian Helfgott passed away after a short illness aged 90. Gillian will be farewelled in a private funeral and a later public celebration of her life. Claire Simmons, 7 News. Still to come in 7 News, see the highlights from the Australian Surfing Championships. How have the locals fared on the water today?
The old boys have hit the waves on the mid-north coast as part of the Australian Surfing Championships. The longboard heats coming to an end today ahead of tomorrow's semi-finals. Conditions were absolutely pumping for the heats of the longboard age divisions in the Australian Surfing Championships at North Haven today. Samantha Crow, 7 News. Still to come in 7 News, Kirsty is back with your local weather forecast. See you in just a sec. And in the national news, the furious response of Scott Morrison explains away his secret power grab. The NRL Grand Final saga takes a turn and the ambitious plan to bring the Tassie Tiger back from the dead. That's all soon. Good evening everyone. A cold front and an associated trough are forecast across parts of New South Wales tomorrow, continuing to move east through to Friday. These will bring showers, cool winds and alpine snow across the south with cool southwesterly winds as well, brushing parts of the southern and eastern state. The north should remain mostly fine and sunny though, as should the coast under a high pressure system. Now the most rainfall is forecast in the south and then heading towards Victoria. We are expecting mostly dry skies along the coast. And tomorrow will be no different. Sunny conditions, blue skies skies for the region. Temperatures reaching the low 20s for the most part following a cool morning though where we could see areas of light frost. In Byron Bay much milder 11 overnight to a top of 17 degrees. Evans Head a top of 20 and Lismore sunny and a top of 19. On the waters tomorrow we are expecting seas around one and a half metres. We're expecting an easterly swell around three to six feet with winds between 15 and 20 knots. On to Friday a little more widespread cloud cover across the day. We are also expecting sunny skies in between though, <coughs> excuse me, Port Macquarie expecting a top of 22 degrees, Warhope there expecting 23. There is a slight chance of a shower in the south, <coughs> excuse me, thanks to some onshore winds, otherwise it should stay sunny and settled in the north, Casino a top of 22. And Saturday will be much the same with blue skies and sunshine. Even the chance of frost on higher ground as Dorigo and Warhope drop down to 5 degrees. The low 20s during the day, so slightly cooler for some of us than Thursday and Friday and a little warmer around Evans Head Casino and Tweeds Head. Some southwesterly winds making it cool, but of course the north forecast to miss most of the showers that we're seeing in the south, Maddie. Good to see some sunshine and I hope your voice gets... Thank you. <laughs> that's <sorry. a> great. <laughs> Thanks, Kirsty. See you. And that's all we have time for tonight. Right now, Dan has your national news. We'll see you tomorrow night at six o'clock. See you then.